Things you need to know when renting and driving a car in Portugal. Uh, so first of all, if you're renting a car, one of the best ways to do it is obviously online. The big car companies in Portugal are Europe Car and Sixth. Uh, to get the best prices, try to rent off of the airport. On the airport locations, they charge you a lot of money. And if you're staying in Lisbon, they'll charge you a lot of money to park your car there. So spend a few days, if you're going to Lisbon, spend it in Lisbon, and then rent a car from one of the downtown offices. Those will be significantly cheaper than the uh, airport locations. Now, things you need to know when you're actually driving in Portugal is that uh, they drive kind of crazy. It's like a bunch of people who have forgotten all the rules for driving, put them all on the road at the same time, and that's kind of what driving here is like. Um, they really love their traffic circles, so if you love traffic circles, this is the country for you. Uh, when you're coming into a traffic circle, you yield to cars into the traffic circle. Um, same thing on the freeways, as you're entering the freeway, you yield to cars uh, when you're coming onto the freeway you yield to cars that are already on the freeway uh, there is no right turn on red lights if you're driving on the freeways most of the freeways are toll freeways and the tolls are actually pretty expensive uh, most of the rental car companies will offer a toll service that uh, you can give them your credit card and for a dollar fifty euro a day uh, they will charge your credit card and charge you those tolls that's probably a good option unless you want to pay every 10 minutes that you're driving. Uh, if you do have one of those toll services, you'll go all the way to the left to the lanes marked V. Another thing to know is insurance in Portugal. Uh, most of the rental car rates come with insurance in the event of a collision to protect the other driver. The typical insurance from the rental car companies does not cover um, theft of your car. Uh, or theft of things inside the car. Um, so if you have an American credit card, uh, try to use one that covers those sorts of things. When you're renting your car online, if you're expecting an automatic car, make sure that you specifically specify an automatic car when you select your rental because the default here is manual. 90% of the rental cars here are manual rental cars. If you pick a manual one online and you show up here and need an automatic, they likely won't have one because they're that unique. Um, the automatics typically are a more expensive rate as well. So if you're like me and you don't know how to drive a stick shift, uh, make sure you pick that online before you get here so that there isn't a lot of difficulty. Uh, I also want to show you a few interesting things about the particular car that I rented or that I got. I picked an automatic. This is a Renault. And they were like, oh, do you know how to operate a car that uses a, a key card for the key? And I'm like, well, no, I have never, I've never had a car with a key card for a key. So let me show you how this works. So this is the key card, key. Um, it has buttons to lock and unlock the doors. Once you're in the car, there's no key slot here, but there's a slot just directly under the radio. You place this key card into that slot, and then that's what turns on the car. To then start it, uh, you step on the brake pedal and you push the start button and it starts the car. Most of the cars here are also diesel cars, so make sure that when you're getting gas, you get diesel and not something else. Otherwise, you may be very sad when your car doesn't leave the gas station. Things to know about parking. Parking in Portugal, particularly in the big cities of Lisbon and Porto, sucks. It's lousy. Uh, on the streets, there's almost zero parking. The parking spaces are narrow. Um, so try to find a parking garage to park your car in. Uh, in the big cities too, sometimes there will be beggars standing in the parking spot, marking it and holding their hand out to offer, you know, a euro for the parking space. If you do want that space, it's probably good if you give them the 50 cents of the euro so that you don't come back to a car full of scratches afterwards. Um, because the streets and spaces are so narrow, a lot of cars, including this car, have a feature where you can push a button inside the door and it'll actually fold the mirrors into the car. Uh, this is good. Narrow parking, always fold your windows in. And if you go down narrow streets, fold your mirrors in too, not your windows. When you're driving on these narrow streets and you haven't done that, at some point in time you might hear a loud cluck and uh, that might be the sound of your mirror hitting someone else's mirror. That might have happened to a friend of mine, so I've heard. Um, just be calm when that happens. These are designed to flex a little bit. 
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe or follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Links are in the description below. You might also enjoy watching one of these other videos. Click any of them to watch.